So I'm just following the path that we have here. Get ready to turn left. Okay. So turning left, not quite yet, at the light. Turn left. Oh, good. We again time this well. Not on purpose, it just so happens to be what happened. <laughs> Okay, nice and wide. Okay, awesome. And when I'm making turns, I'm always... What did I just get caught on? Possibly that cement barrier. I was nowhere near it, but it possibly has an invisible... I was nowhere near whatever I just clipped there, I don't think. It didn't do damage to my vehicle. Oh, that was weird. I mean, maybe I clipped it. Because I went a little too close to the line there. But thankfully, I didn't do any damage, so... Whoops. <laughs> anyway, as I was saying, when you're taking a turn... Uh, I'm always looking in my mirrors to make sure where my uh, trailer is. Let's just ignore what just happened there. <laughs> Alright, so we have 70 kilometer an hour speed limit. So I'll put it on the uh, cruise control as soon as I reach that 70 kilometers, and it will just keep track of all of that for me. Get ready to turn right. And that is one thing you have to watch out for, and it's not really a whole lot you can do about stuff like that. There are some objects in the world that have kind of turn right. much bigger uh, hitboxes than they they appear to have and that could have been an instance of that or it could have just been that I'm, I'm bad yeah, this is kind of a hard turn to make and this is something where you can have happen to you where you get a little hung up so just back up uh, the only real alternative you have is to try and take it wider than you did the first time now this is kind of tricky because there's a lot of objects in my way but I know I can make it so I'm not too worried about it and this is one of those situations where I'm making a lot of mistakes, but the thing that you have to be keeping in mind here is just be calm, deal with the situation. Really, it's not that big of a deal. This game is meant to be fun. And yes, I could be playing it better, but again, do as I say, not as I do. <laughs> and there's a way out of every situation, and then... If you ever get in a situation where you're super stuck, again, not that big of a deal. Hopefully you've been making yourself regular saves, so if you just want to reload one of your saves, that's okay. And if not, there is means in the game to... I'm going 81 kilometers an hour, which isn't technically in the okay range of the speed limit. So we'll keep it at that, because that's what I put the, uh, the uh, cruise control at. But again, just to remind you, if you're ever stuck and you really don't, you want to play this hardcore and you don't really want to uh, load saves and do things over, just click this button, view services and adjustments uh, center, or, or uh, services and adjustment, and this can recover your vehicle. Now you may fail the job that you're on, but this would be your way. If you're, it's just, you're just stuck and there's nothing you can do about it, or you damaged your vehicle to the point that it just won't go anymore, or you're... Your fuel has run out or any number of reasons uh that would be your way to get uh recovered so just wanted to point that out and uh, again to get to that screen or to pause you hit f1 and then you also have quick buttons f5 f6 f7 f8 to get to those other functions you can keybind those functions to other things i don't know when i'm playing this with the steering wheel i do have that f1 keybind the pause bound to something on my steering wheel because I find it important enough. But in that case, with my steering wheel, I I have to move my keyboard aside, so I, I put as many keybinds as I can on that steering wheel so I don't have to use my keyboard. But in the case of me using this controller that I'm using, it's kind of impossible to put every keybind you need. There's just not enough buttons. So I did a lot of what I, the ones I find important to me but as I've said before, if you find certain keybinds more important than the ones that I use, 
feel free to modify the selection I've done to what suits you. This is really about what's the best experience for you. You can follow what I'm doing as a guide, but... That's ultimately what it's about. This is a game where you find your own fun. It's an open world game. What's fun to you may be different than what's fun to other people. You may want to optimize uh, and min-max what makes you the most money and try and make the trips as efficient as fast as you possibly can. And you're not really too worried about what proper etiquette or laws would be. Well, that's not. There's nothing wrong with that. Go ahead and play that way. It's what you find fun. Keep right if you want to role play right. and play the game as realistically as possible, then do that too. It's just entirely up to what you want to play. And this game does give you a lot of Exit. allowance for different play right. styles. Okay, we're only 30 minutes away from our destination. We can take a peek at our map and see how we're doing. So we're going to be getting on a new uh, little bit of highway here, but then we'll be getting off eventually at the capital. Uh, I already have been here, so the uh, agency has already been discovered and the dealership has already been discovered here. So there's nothing really else to do other than just take our job. I'm a little curious, though, because this is our destination, but the navigation has drawn quite a bit past it. What's going on with that? Guess we'll find out when we get there. This could be a weird quirk. I'm going to go ahead and zoom back out. And zooming in, zooming out, I'm using my mouse wheel, just so you know. You can also use these plus and minus keys if you uh, you wish, uh, you know. But they work all the same. But well, that's what I'm doing. It, it doesn't actually show that on the screen, but it, that does work. That's something I forgot to mention in the last bit that I covered on this game. All right. We're doing quite well with this job. We are going to get there in plenty of time. So we're going to just watch our speed. And when we get to 80 kilometers an hour, I'm going to go ahead and press my cruise control button. Now, they are giving me a warning. Oh, I stopped watching the speed because of that. There we go. But again, we've got an hour and 54 minutes to get there. Our estimated arrival is in 21 minutes, so we're fine. What's with this music? Right. Is this and the you're running out of right. time like in Mario? I'm going to go ahead and turn that down because that is... <laughs> Although maybe entertaining, maybe a little loud. Was that not the right music? I did game music. This is one of the things that I, I sometimes find a little confusing about the game is there are just so many sliders here. Oh, that was radio volume I turned down. Where would be music volume? There it is. That's probably that. There's just so many sliders. Yeah, that was definitely it. And this is not something I, I honestly have ever heard before. So this is kind of a new experience for me. Because normally, I'm not this tight on the uh, arrival time. But this is just like those old Mario games. You're running out of time. Here's a different soundtrack for that. <laughs> uh oh okay we're clear of the van I was a little worried about the turn I made there this is one of the reasons why this is one of those things that I recommend like these urgent deliveries they can be good value and normally speaking, I wouldn't have run into trouble, but if you find this to be a little nerve-wracking, don't worry about it. You don't have to do these jobs. You know, you can level up other things. Turn left. Maybe do your hazardous cargo. So this is like a, a caution light, so this light's not normally on. Like, it's not on during these late night times. I don't see anybody coming, so I'm just gonna go. I think, honestly, this soundtrack's pretty entertaining, though. Still probably a little on the loud side. As a matter of fact, I can pretty much guarantee you it's a little on the loud side. So let's turn it down even still more. That's the other thing I'd say is frustrating with this game is the default uh, music is way loud. And right, hopefully that's better. 
Yeah, it definitely is. Keep left and then turn left. Turn left. All right. Again, I can't see the light. Oh, wait, we're in Denmark, though. So we've got a light across the street, which is lovely. So it's over there off to the left. You can see that green light there. That's one of the cool things about Denmark, and somebody in my previous stream did mention that. Oh, as a matter of fact, the person that said it. Hey, Ursi. Oh, I'm not paying attention to the speed again. We'll use our cruise control to take over that for us, so we we'll just slow down a bit here. Now, if I remember correctly, in Denmark, they do have the speed cameras, so really do be get mindful of that. Because right. you, you may get a ticket. Turn right. Yeah. So Ursi's saying that seems to be a common thing in, in movies and, and video games is that the music is a little on the loud side. I find that a real problem. So we're not turning in here, huh? Well, I'll follow where the flag... Oh, okay. It's blocked off. Could be we're going to the back of the store. I think that trend with the music like started in the, I don't know, the 90s maybe? Uh, for movies, that is. Now right, we'll let this guy go. Fast, and then we'll get in there. We are finished. I, I consider that to be kind of a hallmark of a lot of modern movies. Oh, I don't like the way our trailer is. This is really tight, and I took this not wide enough. I have a feeling we're going to get stuck here. Um, I might correct it, but I want to. I just want to get our our delivery point here first. So let's play it safe. Probably just straight ahead. Let me take a look at this in third person. Do I think this will correct itself and not run into the fence? Possibly. But what we can do to help it out a little bit is start pulling it. Once we feel like we're safe here, start pulling it this way a little bit. Just as long as it's not going to hit the wall on the other side. It looks like we're clear. So I'm going to start pulling it a little straighter. All right. I'm not too worried about this parking job here, as we have plenty of time to straighten out the trailer. More of a problem when you don't have that allowance. Okay, we've done it. So it was tight on time, but otherwise we're fine. And that was quite a lot of a reward there. And I got to show you guys a few different things. First off, it was a longer delivery. It was almost 350 kilometers. It was a lot longer time to do it. We consumed quite a bit of fuel. For my dad, that's a real issue on TV. He has it quite loud because, however, every soundtrack and music is loud, the dialogue is quiet, and sometimes, yeah. Yeah, that's what I was about to say. So the problem in modern movies is loud music, mumbling dialogue. I, I, that It's not every movie is like that, but that that trend started in, like, the 90s, and it just it just kept going, and it just it's so annoying. Because, yeah, yeah, as you're saying, you have to turn it up so loud to be able to hear the dialogue, but then you're being deafened by the music. All right, so yeah, a lot of experience here, and a lot of this is because it hit a lot of categories. So we have our level proficiency bonus. This is just a little bit of additional money based off of how high level you are, which is one of the reasons why I delayed getting a loan. The higher level you are, the more money you get. So it's easier and easier to pay off loans uh, the more uh, level higher level you are. And then because we went a far enough distance, we also get a bonus of both experience and money. It was high value cargo, so again, money and experience. And then it was an urgent delivery, which is the uh, the, the one where you need to do it the, at the, the least amount of time to do it. So this is going to be the most rewarding out of the two variants of this. So again, money and experience. And then finally, us parking the trailer gave us a little bit of experience. So this is what you're going to start to expect more and more from future contracts is a lot of modifiers being added on. Okay.
So that was a nice uh, contract. I got to show you guys night driving. I got to show you guys resting. Which is one of the things you're going to have to now keep track of now that you're doing this uh, open world movement. It didn't matter when you were doing quick jobs. But now it matters. You're going to also have to make sure you keep your fuel tank filled up. And I'm going to show you how to do that in a little bit of a second here. And just keep that, you know, keep an eye on your rest so you don't get too tired. So, okay. Let's go ahead and take a look. At first, what's the condition of our vehicle? So I'm going to come back out into drive. We're going to go back into our uh, cabin view. And we're going to look at... First off, I'm just going to pause so no time passes. We're going to look at our fuel. Uh, because we have a very big fuel tank, although we burn a decent amount of fuel, we still are quite full. So we don't have to fill up if we, you know, and you don't have to fill up if you don't want to. As far as our rest, the more blue this gets, the more tired we are. So as long as we don't take a super long job, we should be okay. I would say definitely if you if you have taken a, if you've already done a job, my usual rule is maximum two jobs a day. If it's a longer distance job, one job in a day. That's, I think, a pretty good rule to follow. Because if I remember correctly, you only have 11 hours before you have to rest in, in Euro Truck Simulator. It's 14 hours in American Truck Simulator, but in American Truck Simulator, your guy has to rest for more hours than you do in Euro Truck Simulator. It's 10 versus 9. 9 in Euro Truck Simulator 2. So... That's something to be mindful of. So now that we know what the state of our condition is, we know how, how rested our guy is, we know where our fuel is at, we're going to look to do another job. So I'm going to go ahead and unpause. We're going to hit the escape key or on my on my joystick, the start button. We're going to go to job market, go to freight market. Now you can do the same interface from the map button as well. So if you hit the, the M key or the your whatever your map key bind is, you can also come in here. And then there should be a freight market uh, selector here. We are now in Copenhagen, so we'll click on that as our origin point. And I have price per distance. Let's do a short distance. So I'm going to do arrow up. And that will put the shortest distance up towards the top. So the shortest trip is going to be back into Germany using that ferry yet again. Now, this is a fragile cargo, which is being symbolized here with the wine grass glass with the crack in it. It's a standard delivery, so we don't have to do it all that quickly. Yeah, uh, we've got an hour to pick it up. I don't know 100% where the job is, but I think an hour is a reasonable time. So, yeah, I think I'm going to do this job. Now we're going to have to go across that ferry, and it does tell you what you can expect ferry price-wise. So your your actual distance, your ferry distance, your cost for your ferry, and then your overall trip time. As far as what we're getting paid here, this isn't a bad amount for the distance we're covering. Oh, also the amount of time for our trip. Now this does factor in the ferry. And if we do get a little bit of rest on the ferry, that would be nice. I I don't know. I know for long distance ferry trips, you, you will get a full rest. I don't know about these short trips. You might not get any rest at all. I really don't know. We're going to have to pay attention to that bar and see. Yeah, hopefully, if we remember how much has changed. But in any case, let's go ahead and set this GPS destination. Okay, and then we're going to look on our map to see where it is. Okay, so it seems like it's not that far away. As a matter of fact, it's just having me go in a loop around. Now... That seems kind of silly to make this a loop. Uh, I don't think this was a one-way street. I guess we can find out, but... As a matter of fact, where is it taking me? Who was the, uh, the, the employer? We can look back at that by going to the freight market. It should already have the one we're selected. So we're... We're already at the place we're supposed to pick this up, so that navigation system is telling us silly things. So we don't really have to go anywhere. We just have to go back to the icon that we used to deliver to pick up our new job. Which is excellent. Okay, so we just need to turn around. I'm going to pull forward to turn around. Or I have more room to do so. Okay, back up. And you back up by hitting your downshift button twice. Once into neutral. And once into reverse. Okay, and then this reverse process to get back into drive, so your upshift, you hit it once to neutral and once to drive. 
I believe the default keys for upshifting if you're using a real automatic like me on the keyboard would be the shift key, but I highly recommend you use a controller if you're doing that. So, uh, wait, yeah, that's right, the icon. Where's the icon? Hold on. Ooh, okay, so this is an interesting thing. I've never actually seen this. So the drop-off point and the delivery point are separate places. Interesting. Usually there's only one entrance to a business, so this is kind of a oddity. And this isn't a one-way street, I don't think. Yeah, see, there's traffic going that way, so I don't see a reason why we loop around here. So I'm just going to go ahead and go right. A little wider than I needed to take that, but <laughs> let's not worry about that. Okay, so we're just coming to the front side of the business here. Yeah, it's right there. I see it. So does this gate open? That's interesting. I mean, that's not unusual. I just... It's interesting that there's two separate uh, entrances. That's not normal. Usually there's a connection point. Okay, so... Get A. Go to our freight market. Again, it's highlighted the job we've already selected. We're going to just click on it again and hit take job. It's time to hit the road. Okay. That's one thing that you kind of learn as you play this game too, is just like how the different businesses are set up. This one's a little bit more of an oddity for me and my experience, but I haven't done a lot of driving in Denmark. Maybe this is more normal. Okay, again, reverse. Just back up here until we get under the trailer. Okay. Now again, default is the T key, or for me, joypad, D-pad down. Ready to roll. Go back into our first person view, go back into uh, drive. That's one thing that's easy really to forget, is to switch into drive when you're doing this automatic setup, because you don't really do a lot of shifting if you're doing the real shifting. Now, if you're playing with your simple automatic setup, then you don't really have to worry about that as much, because it's the S key to reverse after you've come to a full stop. And uh, once you've come to a full stop after you're done reversing, you just hit the W key to go forward and you're good to go. Now, this is one of those cases where you can do your save again. So just like we did before, this is where I would normally put my job save. So I, I click on job. Now, again, I would use a mission complete save uh, after I've done one as well. So these are some saves you can do. I'm not really keeping on top of that because I'm worried more about the tutorial here, but that's just something I do to kind of keep my saves together. Now there are frequent auto saves, but sometimes the auto saves, now we're gonna have to go wide here to make it out of this gate. So, okay, we come off over into the other lane, just to make sure you're safe. Unlike what we did early on in this, <laughs> but that's okay. Turn left. Okay. okay. Looking good. Yeah. All right. On our way. So we're just going to go back the way we came. Again, watch my speed. I'm going to use my, my gate brake or the engine brake. Slow down a little bit. I will say in your truck simulator, in my experience, the engine braking is, is a... A lot harder to use Get ready to turn right. because it tends to come on a little bit stronger than it does in American Truck Simulator. Turn right. And I don't know if that's because that's not something that European trucks usually do. That's more of an American truck thing. From what I was understanding from stuff I was reading in the forum post, I will point out I am not a truck driver. I don't really have any experience with trucks, so if this is not true, feel free to correct me, but... From what I've read in forums, uh, the retarder right. is much more of a and European thing right. and not so much an American thing, even though it is an American truck simulator. But the uh, jake turn braking right. is like super common. Now, maybe they do do some jake braking in uh, Europe, but I don't know. Maybe I misunderstood the, the forum post too, so it... that could have been a cleaner turn. All right, so I'm going to have to back up. 
going to be hard to pull this through without getting caught again, though, because there's vehicles in my way. I think I did it. Yeah. And honestly, this, this bit of the game, like making your turns right, I'm giving you a good demonstration of how difficult it can be. Uh, and it's one of those things that it does require a decent amount of focus. You have to be thinking about. Sometimes when you're thinking about, okay, I have to turn right, I have to turn left, and all that stuff, you kind of forget about your trailer, especially when you're in this view. It's probably much easier to keep track of this stuff when you're in third person. And see, this is that turn again, so I kind of taking it overly cautious but see even with me trying to make adjustments see how i just barely made it through now if you're more experienced with trucks and stuff maybe you can make these turns more easily than i can but especially if you have never played this game i think it's something that you would struggle with you've never driven a truck and don't know anyone who is doing it enough to give answers that's all right it doesn't really matter in the course of us... Again, we're going to use the engine brake. And it could be a thing with the automatic setup too. Because when I use... When I'm playing American Truck Simulator, I'm using the Jake brake for the manual transmission. And that might be part of the reason why it just comes across as being smoother there than it does here. Because maybe the uh, the computer with it doing taking care of the shifting, it... it has to kind of like react to you using the engine brake and it's a little slow to do so. I'm not really sure, Exit. but right. I often find it like takes a while to really kick in sometimes and it's kind of clunky when it does. Turn right. All right. Back up to 70. But yeah, anyway, what I was saying is uh, making turns with your trailer is like one of the things that I think is the most difficult. When I was first playing Euro Truck Simulator, uh, it, I got stuck all the time, and I still get stuck, even though I play this game a lot. It really depends on where my focus is at. In this case, I'm playing kind of early morning, and I guess I just don't have that focus there. But, oh, it's now 80. Speed up. And I guess, you know, there's other distractions and stuff, but even, even when I am focused, there's always these occasional times where I just, I'm not paying attention to enough things because it's just, there's so many things you have to keep track of. You have to watch a trailer in the mirrors. You have to make sure you take your turns nice and wide. Uh, you have to be mindful where the other traffic is. It's a lot to keep track of, and it's very easy to get it wrong, and when you get it wrong, uh, it's kind of a headache. Well, uh, it's, it can be a little... Maybe not a headache, but... It can take you some work to get out of a... a, a half a se second of uh, uh, lapse of judgment, or just a little bit of misjudging uh, a turn. And you can get stuck for like a minute, you know, so It doesn't take a whole lot to get stuck and it's easy to do and I haven't watched a lot of people play this game But I would imagine that even Experienced players sometimes get hung up every uh, every so often So if it's something that you have happened to me uh, or happened to you, it's happened to me a couple times in this uh, uh, Playthrough, but if it's something that happens to you really don't worry about it. Everybody makes mistakes Just get through the mistake and you'll be fine But yeah, but no, by no means, if you're having trouble with this kind of stuff, by no means think that you're bad at the game. You're not. It's just that part of the game is difficult. Managing a trailer is difficult. Backing a trailer up is difficult. And it takes a lot of practice. And even with that practice, you can still mess it up. So... The main thing you need to focus on in this, I mean, do what you can to make sure your, your trailer doesn't get stuck and stuff, but just be mindful of the AI vehicles. Sometimes you can't, you can't help right what happens, but 
the main thing that you want to do if you want to try and make sure that you're doing a good job in this game is just try and prevent the collisions that are going to happen with other vehicles that's the that's your number one priority is preventing collisions preventing collisions with with obstacles preventing collisions with other vehicles and you have an incentive to do that because you can get your vehicle damaged and that damage can cost a lot of money to fix so being a safe and and defensive driver is going to be your number one priority learning how to do the the trailer that will come with time and you just have to stick with it and it, it will get there don't worry about it And a lot of the, the use of your trailer is going to be down to watching the mirrors, which is going to be a skill that you're going to need to use for your defensive driving too. So they do work hand in hand. So get used to using your mirrors, making sure where, where things are and what's around you. Uh, it is obviously a lot easier to track your trailer when you're in this view, right? But eventually, even if you start off playing this way, you want to be able to play this way. Oh, and it's also 70 here while I'm sitting here talking to you. <laughs> so. Yeah, let's get our cruise control back on. All right, so there's a fuel station. and Those green icons are where you refuel. We will refuel once we're done with our trip, though. So don't worry about that just yet. Okay. We're pulling into where the ferry is to take us to our destination we have to turn right here hopefully the turn light's still right. green by the time we get there but again don't rush the i'm gonna get a ticket no okay i didn't i was about to say don't rush the light just focus on driving safe and making sure your trailer makes it through and then i did exactly not that so again do as i say not as i do i didn't have any problems there but i was probably close to getting a ticket And it's better to wait a little bit of time than get the ticket, because the you know the tickets add up, uh, and they can be expensive. Uh, I don't think, from what I remember of Euro Truck Simulator, I don't think the tickets are as punishing as they are in American Truck Simulator. But again, accidents are more punishing in here because you don't have the insurance. So again, I'm pressing the A button, and this time we don't have a choice of where to go. This this ferry only takes us one place, which is exactly where we want to go. So we just do that. Never mind. I'll find a new route. Oh, I, I meant to pay attention to where the uh, rest was. It doesn't look like we really... If we got rest, we didn't get a lot. I'm going to assume we don't get any with those short trips, but I could be wrong with that. Turn right. So again, you just finished a, a path. So if you wanted to, this would be a good opportunity to do that job save. Just kind of gives you your own personal checkpoints. Now, if you are curious, I did show this the last time, but... You want to know where the autosaves are because you are not seeing them. Make sure you check this box and you can see where autosaves were. And we can see the last autosave happened almost four minutes before the one I just did. So that's why doing these manual saves can be good because although we're getting these manual saves every three to five, I mean, these autosaves every three to five minutes, losing out of five minutes is a problem sometimes. So. That's why I just I just recommend it. It just gives you another bit of a barrier. And also, you don't know where that autosave is going to put you. It could put you in somewhere inconvenient. Like, let's say uh, you got stuck somewhere. You managed to work your way out, but something else happens that you really didn't like. Like, I don't know, an AI vehicle runs into you and there's really nothing you could do about it. And you just want to, you know, you don't want to have that damage happen to your truck. You don't want to have the ticket that you got. Uh, you go to re reload your autosave, and it puts you back in the, uh, you know, whatever the ob object you got stuck on was. Uh, and that's obviously not an ideal autosave. Uh, so... Sometimes that's where a manual save can be really important. And then you might lose time, too, through the autosave, because the autosave puts you... Uh, on the, uh, the highway. 
you were going 80 kilometers an hour and you had a tight schedule you needed to follow and but the auto save puts you back drop. on that highway going 80 kilometers an hour except now you're at a dead stop because that's always what the the saves are like uh and you're not in gear and then you're kind of flustered because you're on a time schedule and you, you you forget that you're not in gear and you're trying to move and you're like ah and you get all flustered you know like that kind of stuff can happen and I, that's kind of an exaggeration but It's just good to have the saves be where you know they're going to be. Their auto saves are very generous and they're nice to have, but as a newer player, Keep I just want to kind of drill that into you down. that sometimes it can be real good to, to do regular manual saves on a nice safe spot. Turn so left. this is yet another spot where you could do a manual save because we're stopped in traffic, so... Because I'm uh, I'm stopped at this light, I'd have to stop at this light anyway. Why not do a save? And we're not in Denmark anymore, so I can't see the light. So this is where I could just use the the, the oncoming traffic as my as my guide. Turn my wheel a little bit too much, and the turn signal kicked off. So I, that's what I'm going to use. Rather than look at the light, I don't know when the light's going to turn green, but now I know the lights turn green because they're moving. So I'm going to pull out into traffic. This is where I feel like the the uh, European uh, traffic signals are really a problem. Oh, the AI is letting me through. How generous, even though that's not what they should be doing. Um, it's possible the light churn turned, but that's my guide. As I watch the traffic and I see what they do, and if they stop, I assume the lights turn. But if this was American Truck Simulator, I still would be able to see that light having pulled forward like that. So that's going to be my criticism of uh, European traffic signals: is if you pull forward like that, I don't know, is that etiquette in Europe to pull forward when you were going to make a left turn? Because that is etiquette in America, is to pull forward a little bit. I assume it's the same, but that's kind of an assumption on my part. And then I guess to talk about me personally, like something I struggle with is, at least in the game, and this, this is more uh, also a problem with using a joystick, and this is even more so true with a keyboard. It's kind of hard sometimes to have precise control. So sometimes my me being in the in my lane as I should be is not as clean as it should be. Right. So that's that's a right. personal thing that I, I need to work on. It's just and you can do a lot of that with mirrors. Exit. So right. again, highlighting the importance of, of, of mirrors, at least in my mind. Uh, I can check right. my lane uh, right. to make sure I'm in it properly by looking in the left and right mirror. Turn right. Okay, so yet again, we have a save point here. I'm not going to do it this time. I think you guys get the point. But... But I'm going to kind of point that out every so often. That this is a point where you could be doing a save. Cersei has an answer for me. Hmm, you have sometimes different lanes on the ground where... Uh, to wait on traffic lines. Oh, okay. Well, I don't know if I've noticed that in game, but I could be wrong. I mean, we have lines too, uh, where you're supposed to stop for the light. But what, what I mean is, like, when you're turning left in, in the U.S., you usually pull beyond that line. And then the, the idea of that is, once the light starts to turn, like, it starts turning yellow, let's say. The, the traffic, if they're doing what they're supposed to do, that's going straight through will stop, and then the traffic that is pulled forward to make that left turn, they'll go ahead and make the turn Get at that point. Turn right. And because they've already pulled into uh, turn right. the lane, and more or less, right. it's like more or less what they're doing is they're clearing clearing traffic for the, the next group that's getting the green light. So this turn is where we right. have to turn. This is kind of a very awkward turn, so I'm going to take it very wide. And this is where you get your, Safe and sound. if you've got the proper, like, you know, you, you think of it ahead of time. This is where you can help your trailer through. And that's kind of the, in my opinion, the proper approach. It might be tricky to pull off based off of traffic, though.
Okay, let's go ahead and do the Let's Play It Safe, which I, you're newer to this game. I should, I, sh I want to stress you should always try and do this. If you can't do it, it's okay. Just hit your enter button or your A button in my case on the uh, controller. To, now see, I don't know how good of an approach I just made here. I should probably have taken it wider off to the right of the vehicle rather than come straight at the box. Because this is going to be kind of tricky to get into. So I'm going to try and do it, but I don't think I'm going to be able to pull the trailer over enough to get in the box the way I need it to. But I'll give it a go. And if it fails, then we'll give it a reverse. And if that fails... That would be the point that I would kind of give up on this. So that's what I would expect out of you, too. You're new to the game, but always give an attempt. If you don't manage it, you're missing out on 15 experience, but 15 experience isn't a huge amount in the grand scheme. I think we pulled it off. Yeah, that looks good. It's not going to be maybe the cleanest trailer park, but that did it. So yeah, that's all you got to do. And you'll get the hang of it eventually. By attempting it, you're at least giving yourself practice on what it is you need to do. So, again, it's okay if you can't do it. Do your best, and after a while, if you're starting to get frustrated with it or whatever, just hit just hit enter, or again, in my case, A button, and, you know, try again next time. Some places are going to be harder to do that uh, pull-in than others. Some of them it will be just a straight line and it's really easy to do. And some of them you'll have to pull off to one side and depending on how you pulled in there in the first place may not be that easy, but at least give it that attempt. As much as that 15 experience isn't a big deal, if you do it consistently, consistently it does add up. Okay, so this is where I would do my save of Mission Complete because I have indeed finished the contract. And we can work to getting another job, but at this point we're more than likely getting tired and we've done our two jobs in one day. So, I think it's time we do our rest. So we're not going to pick a job, we're just going to go to drive. Go back into first person. See, our guy has a little bit of energy left, but... I would say you're pushing it if you think you're going to get another job done with this energy. If it's a very short range, like you're delivering into the exact same town, maybe. But besides that, I think once we get to this point, it's just better safe to get your rest. So what we're going to do is we're going to open up the map and we're specifically looking for the blue bed icons. That's going to be our rest. Now, usually I like to refuel at the same time that I get rest. But unfortunately, in this town, there's no actual station to get refueled at within the town. There is one over here. Now, we could drive there because there is also a rest spot. I'm actually tempted to do that because I want to I want to hit both of these points. And oftentimes, the reason why I refuel first is because we still have time before we need to rest. So refueling takes time. But if I've slept first and then I did this trip, which is expecting me to take 38 minutes to get here to do the refueling bit, that's time that I'm taking out of what I could be doing jobs. So at the moment, I'm not really on a ticking clock unless I take a really long time to get rest. But once I've done the rest i'm on a ticking clock of how many jobs can i get in this day done so i usually like to take care of all of my affairs before i do that rest that's why okay so we have our our waypoint marked so all we have to do now is just follow the waypoint so we have to go left here now this is where i would do a save and i'm not going to do it until we actually do the rest but i would do a new unique save Turn left. Uh, and we'll do that once we're done here, if I remember. Hopefully I do Turn remember. Right. And this is the first time where this has been relevant, because so far, with the quick jobs, before you bought your first truck, there was no open world element. So you really couldn't do what I'm about to do, which is go and get fuel and rest and all that stuff. And you weren't required to do that either. Now, I was watching that truck, that, uh, not truck, the, the car, that white car there. I was watching it because it did have that left turn signal, and I wasn't sure what that AI would Get do. Ready. And that's where the defensive driving comes in. You see the AI vehicles, you get an idea of what it is they want to do, and then you keep that in mind turn for how left. you're going to act. Because I was almost ready 
if it came up to hit slam the brakes on because I didn't know if that AI vehicle would p turn out in front of me. Sometimes the AI can do unpredictable things. And a little bit of what you're doing with the safe driving and the defensive driving Caution. Please watch the speed limit. is anticipating what they're going to do. All right, we I was going to put cruise control on that 50, but we're about to go up to 80, so and if some of this stuff is, like, obvious to you, yeah, that's, that's fine, but I'm also going to be talking about this stuff in case it isn't obvious. Because I don't know what level of driving experience the people that are going to be watching this have. It's a little hard to get into this game if you have no driving experience. Keep right. And I do apologize if I haven't been approaching this at a beginner enough level for somebody like that, because I, I really would like to say that if you don't have any driving experience, there's nothing that's stopping you from still playing this game. It might be a little bit more challenging because you don't know a lot of these these more basic elements, but I would say again, by no means stay away from this game because you don't have that experience. Because this might be a way where you can do that. This is a game. There are no real consequences in the real world for anything you do. You got in an accident, yeah, I mean, obviously, you have problems where you have to pay uh, money and stuff in-game, but it's fake money. It's not real money. It's not your real money. So... Keep right, and then exit right. And nobody gets hurt in an accident in this game. So... In that regard, there aren't exit. really real, real right. consequences to stuff like you would have normally if you were doing this for real. So... This is where it ends. Okay. So, we're going to pull up to this icon. Get our fuel. Stop on the green icon. You're going to hit the E key or whatever you've key bound to start uh, to turn off your engine. Now that your engine's off, you're either going to hold in the enter button or whatever you have key bound to do the same function. In our case, the A button on our joystick. And you just hold it in, and then eventually it will say your fuel tank is fuel uh, is, is full. You'll let go, and now you can restart your engine, and you can drive off. And you'll hear, ooh, that is if you don't run into things, you hear a cash register sound. At that point, you've paid the money that showed up on your little indicator of how much fuel you filled and how much it was going to cost you. And now what we're going to do is we're just going to pull up. To the rest stop, which is again that blue bed. And here it is where this parking sign is. And just go ahead and pull into where these spots are. And once you get that button that comes up with this prompt that says press the E key to stop your engine, that's the point where you can hit that button, you turn off your engine, then you hit the A key, and you rest. Now we've already did this once, but I don't think I explained it thoroughly. And because enough time passed, our loan installment just happened. So you see a little blue ticker that happened there at the very bottom of my navigation system. That Those are prompts that will happen as time goes by. It's unfortunate that that's really the only time you get to see uh, that message. I really wish they would put them in the, the F8, the short messages. But F8, the short messages on the little rod advisor, is only for these messages. The press A to turn off uh, your, well, press E to turn off your engine, press A to rest, all that stuff. That's where that pops up. Okay, so we have done a couple of jobs. We bought our first truck. We're really on our way to continue forward here. And we're on the first step of our journey to starting our own company. So for a while, you're just going to be doing the same kind of thing you've been doing, just with the extra elements of the open world travel and having to maintain your truck. So filling it up with fuel, with the truck that you should have bought, whether you bought the Mercedes that I bought or the Volvo that I recommended uh, multiple times here, you're going to have a really big fuel tank if you did that 4x2 chassis, which should have been the only chassis you had available to you. If I remember correctly, the Volvo has a much bigger fuel tank. I think it's about 1,400 liters. So uh, you have a lot more fuel to work with, and you're not really going to have to refuel all that often. 
I do like to put myself into a habit of every time I rest, before I rest, I fill up my uh, tank with fuel. But again, at the starting point, you probably could get away with that for a few days because of the size of your fuel tank. This is where we're going to go ahead and put our save in. So I'm going to call this one roaming. That is if my steam thing wouldn't show up. I hate that. It does that every time you hit the shift key. It used to be shift tab. So I call this one roaming and I hit save. And this is the one I do when I'm not on a job. Mission complete is when I finish a job. Job is usually when I take a job and maybe some points along the route where I've got a set stop. Where I can feel comfortable putting that save in. Roaming is what I do when I've done things out in the game world, but I'm not on a mission. That's when I do that. So when I'm going to, to go get rest, or maybe I'm exploring the map to find those more question marks that are out in towns uh, to make sure I unlock as many of those as I can. That's when I'm going to start using that roaming save. So those are the three save files I usually use. You can use more or less than that. You can name them, whatever you want. But that's just what I recommend and what I do. But feel free to do whatever is comfortable for yourself. All right, so what is the next step of our journey? We bought our truck. We've done a couple jobs with our truck. You more or less have gotten to those beginning stages. The next step is to start growing as a company. So to do that, we're going to need to upgrade our garage. But we're not going to do it yet. So we know that we need 180,000 euros to do it. For the sake of this series and to expedite things, I am going to take another loan to do this, but I'm not going to take it yet. What I'm going to do is I'm going to give you guys a, a, a milestone just as I did in the last stream. So last stream, the objective was to get to level six, and that was the point we were going to buy our new truck. Now, the milestone we're going to get to is level 10. Now, there's no particular reason why I'm picking level 10 as this. This is just the milestone we're going to follow. Once we're to level 10, that's the point we're going to look to expand as a company. Now, again, you don't have to follow this milestone if you don't want to. If you want to be able to get through this game without taking any loans... Feel free to do that. That's a perfectly acceptable way to play this game. There's nothing wrong with it. But again, to ex expedite things in, in this series so you guys can learn the different aspects, I'm going to play offline to get to level 10. Once I've gotten there, and if you're following exactly what I'm doing with this series, once you've gotten there, we'll reconvene, and then we'll do the next step, which is to upgrade our garage and start looking towards starting an actual company. So we're going to be hiring drivers... We're going to go through all the process we need to do to get that done and what is all involved in that. So that's our objective. Now, as far as things that you should keep an eye on to get you to that point, if you haven't already been doing it, I highly recommend to make sure you are finding all of the agencies that are in town. So whenever you encounter a town and there's question marks in it, make sure you explore. Not only will you be unlocking dealerships, you'll also be unlocking these agencies, which are marked by the magnifying glass. That's going to be important once we get into hiring drivers, because the more of these you're able to uncover, the more drivers you will have access to when you go to hire them. So that is the one thing that you need to be watching out for as you're doing these jobs. So continue to do the jobs, continue to explore the areas that you're in, find more and more towns that you haven't gone to yet, make the money uh, that you will make with these contracts, take on different contracts to kind of learn what they're all about, maybe take a ferry trip. Do the different various things you need to do to learn the game. And... We'll reconvene at that level 10 and we'll start the next process of this tutorial. So I hope you guys have enjoyed and learned some things.